Hi, I'm CJ Altmerig with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado, and we've got a special treat for you today. So today we're going to bring you a 2021 Cimarron North Star Four Horse Gooseneck. Now, the reason why this trailer is so special is this is actually a custom order by by an, a customer. So what we do is is we love. It, there's nothing I enjoy more than sitting down with a customer, going through what they're looking for in their next trailer them throwing out ideas, them throwing out this is what I want, and then sitting down and going completely through it, making our suggestions as well. We learn a lot from the customers. We come up with some new options, some of the, some of the most unique things that, that we put on some of these trailers has come from customer ideas. And then we kind of evolve it with Cimarron from there, and then Cimarron builds the final product. So it's a really cool process, it's really detailed, Again, we like to sit down and, and go through the entire build process with you. We're gonna go ahead and show you the drawing on this trailer. And, and the reason why I wanna show this drawing to you is, is, is this is just one portion of, of the drawing itself. This is a top view of the trailer. As you can see, it's extremely detailed. It's not just, hey, here's, you know, it's gonna have mangers and it's a four horse slant and this is the front dock room. I mean, you can see by the detail of what Cimarron does, and then we give you side views of the trailers as well. And what we'll do is, is, is we work through the process, we'll go through these options, we'll get you this drawing, which is fantastic because in, in our minds everything might work, but then once we get it into this drawing, we might say, hey, what if we did this? What if we moved it there? What if we, you know, this, pro this flow isn't gonna be quite what we thought it was, let's make some tweaks. And then from there, they'll, they'll adjust that drawing as well. But again, it's a, it's a unique process. It really gives you a good snapshot of how the trailer will look, how it lays out, how it flows. And then again, um, you know, we'll, we'll go through maybe about two or three different versions of this as, along the way. And then once we get to a final uh, sign off point, the customer is good, we're ready to sign off. And then we'll start the build process, uh, you know, a few weeks down the road, but we'll go ahead and sign off and get the order placed. But this trailer we're looking at, like I mentioned, it's a four horse. This trailer is seven, seven tall. It's eight foot wide. It's 26 feet and nine inches long. But there's kind of some cool things that we've done to it. And as, as you can see on the drawing, we're gonna go through this entire trailer. I'm gonna show you, there it is on paper, but here it is in the finished product. So let's take a look at this trailer and I'll walk you through what this customer wanted, some of the ideas that the customer came up with, some of the suggestions we made, and then obviously the, the final product here. So let's start up here. So the, the lady and her daughter are gonna be doing a lot of the, the traveling with the horses themselves. And one of the very first things is on one of these trailers is a hydraulic jack. As you can see, it's the single leg electric over hydraulic jack. It's a lot more responsive than your electric jacks are, and it also has the manual override. So when this, when this uh, lady and her daughter are traveling, boy, it's really nice to reach up and push a button and up and down this trailer goes. If you do get in an emergency situation, it does have the hand pump on here. Typically, if, if you pull up to this trailer and maybe the battery is dead, um, you can usually plug it into the truck and let it run a few minutes and it'll usually give enough juice to get it down on the truck. And then as you're in transit, the truck will work as a trickle charger to the battery, so it will recharge it. But with that being said, if you do get in a situation where you have to um, hand crank this up or down, you can. The actual handle stores over underneath here under the gooseneck drop side, but it's as simple as sliding in and then pumping this up and down. There is also a valve on this side that I'll, I'll pull out with my finger. You don't want to grab it with pliers or anything, but you want to pull it out and then twist it back about a quarter turn and then it stays out. Now I can crank the trailer down. What you want to do is you always want to remember once you get to that point to just turn this back. I mean, it's as simple as rolling it forward and it goes back into the system itself. And the reason why is if we leave this trailer for a day and we leave that out, when we come out here, the nose will be dropped down to the ground. So it's, a, it's, a, it's nice to have this manual override. Um, there are some hydraulic systems out there that don't have this. 
which again, we like it from an emergency standpoint. This is what Cimarron uses. This is what we like to put on them. Spare tire located to the left of it. I want you to remember, we have one spare tire here. This customer wanted two spare tires. So we located one here. I'll show you where the other one's located here in a little bit. Battery box with a battery disconnect, which that disconnect is really important from that standpoint of how I just mentioned that, hey, if you leave a light on and you walk away from this trailer, it'll drain this battery. So that's maybe where you get into that situation where you pull up to this trailer to hook up, battery's dead, then you gotta go with the manual um, override. But what's really nice is when I park this trailer and walk away from it, I can literally walk over here, roll that to the off position, and then it kills all power to the, the trailer itself. This customer wanted air ride suspension. I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, as we work to the back, but right there, is your self-contained compressor. It's very easy to use. You literally hit the on button and then you'll want to roll it to the raise position to go down the road. And that's it. You walk away from it. When I park overnight, if I stop for lunch, it's not a big deal. You know, horses are loaded. You can go ahead and leave it on there. But if, if you park overnight, you get to a show, you get home, you want to turn it off, roll it to the, the lower position, and then I want to clear the line. And I'm going to hold this line till it stops hissing at me. This is really important because, you know, this air in the lines can create condensation. When you get into the cold winter months, it can potentially freeze, crack a line, you know, do, do damage to the system itself. So what we want to do is we want to clear this every time we use this trailer. So again, off, roll it to the lower position, and then clear the line. And again, in transit, turn it on roll it to the raised position and go. Now, one thing that I always like to recommend to customers is if, if I'm loading tack, any type of equipment, or more importantly, the horses, if you're hooked up, I like to have the system on, but not raised. And the reason why is once we roll it to the raised position, we're gonna pick, pick this box up about two and a half inches. So when we do that, the box is higher, so it's it's a bigger step for our horses. Now this, this trailer is gonna have ramps going into the, the load space itself, but you have to think about when we raise it up, that changes the angle of that ramp, making it a little bit steeper. So loading and unloading, you know, we like to have it in the lower position, and then once you're ready to go down the road, you just roll it to raise, that compressor will kick back on, and it'll put power to the, uh, or uh, put air to the bags and then pick it up from there but you wanna talk about a system and the most common thing that you will get back from a customer with one of these air ride trailers are is they'll say, I'll never own another trailer without it. I mean, it is, it is a game changer. It is, you know, we spend a lot of money, a lot of time on these animals. We want them to compete at the highest level. We wanna give them every opportunity we can. We do it from a nutritional standpoint. We do it from a veterinary standpoint. You know, we want them to perform so Let's not forget about this. We got to get them to the show. So they're going to step off this trailer a lot fresher. You know, they're not getting that, that um, you know, a, a lot of impact on those joints. You know, roads are rough. I mean, you feel it in a the pickup, they're feeling it back there. So that air ride is a game changer. Now let's kind of jump into kind of how this customer wanted this set up. So we did a front dressing room here. We put a nice big 42 inch wide door with a step so our transition's nice and easy getting in here. And then as we step in here, we've got some LED lights in the tack room. We got one up here in the goose neck. We got one above the door. They're the LED Optibright. They put out a ton of light. Carpeted the, the deck and also the gooseneck drop, and then put a 12 inch boot box that runs across that gooseneck drop. This is a great place for little miscellaneous items that you know might move around in transit or just kind of keeping things nice and tidy, keeping things where, where you want them to be. So they wanted a couple shelves and clothes rods. So what we did is they wanted them a certain height off the floor so on our spec sheet, we note that, hey, this, we wanted it 72 inches off the floor. 
that's where it's located and then there's a second one on this partition wall same thing 72 inches off the floor clothes rod below it the reason why that they wanted them they wanted two of these is i mean one you have the space in order to do it but mom can have one section daughter can have the other section so it's just keeping things nice and organized from that standpoint as we step out here and look at driver's side very first thing is let's look at the top rail of this trailer so we added a few more clearance lights but then also you'll notice three of those 16 inch awning lights for load lights I mean this it, you know this in a 36 foot long trailer but you know they wanted light coverage you know we put one above the tack door we kind of put one you know about center the horse stall area and then one, one towards the back so plenty of light coverage out here as we're loading unloading um, at night time tacking up unsaddling anything like that so a lot of lights got added to this trailer which is really cool they will never have to do anything in the dark on this trailer <laughs> You'll see the big drop windows. On the first stall, it's a little bit smaller drop window, but that's because we have an access door right there. And then there's also a ramp going in there. So if they wanna throw in some miscellaneous items in that front, that first one, instead of having to lift things up and in there, you know, they've got that ramp. Again, you know, this trailer is in the lower position so this ramp isn't as steep as it could be if we if we raise it up with the air ride again it'll change the angle of that all up go ahead and shut these drop windows these are nice big heavy duty drop windows that cimarron builds that's massive framing around these these guys are going to hold up i mean this is not a prefab lightweight drop window. These will hold up over time. Everything's key to like on this trailer too. So the tack, these mangers, these drop windows, the other stuff I'll show you that we get into here in a minute, everything is key to like. So it's one key for this entire trailer. I also want you to notice on these drop windows, you'll see the welded hinges with grease certs. So really good from a maintenance standpoint. You know, you can lube those up, keep everything nice and smooth as far as operation goes. Same on our manger doors. We have three mangers on this trailer here, but then also look at the weld on this thing. This is the finished product. So if this is on the finished product, you can't imagine what's on the inside of this. This is, that is the Cimarron difference right there. Again, three mangers these are 21 inches deep customer wanted this carpeted and then added the hooks in here a lot of storage on this trailer and one thing that I really really like is, is on this we were able to go ahead and put this big door I really like these big big manger doors this is a really good place for you know sometimes people carry feet or some bigger heavier items and you know getting them out of these these back two mangers can be a little bit trickier i mean you know you could set a sack of feed right in this you know you're talking 50 pounds getting in and out of this trailer to where in those you're actually having to reach in and kind of down to where this is going to be a little bit easier to access um, but just a lot of storage options on this trailer when it comes to uh, how we laid this trailer out Now this is the other thing that this customer wanted. She wanted a full width rear tack. And man, these things are getting really, really popular. And the reason why is you're getting almost the same amount of square footage as you would in a mid tack, maybe not quite as much, but what this allows us to do is it allows us to get a large tack room for you without adding a whole lot of link to the trailer. When you do a mid tack, you know, it's, you're usually looking at four foot to five foot is what you're adding in length. To where in these type of options, we're really only adding anywhere from one to two, three foot maybe if you wanted to go that big on a, on a rear tack. But man, this thing lays out really, really nice. 
so we have dual rear doors. We have dual steps going in there as well. Again, making it nice and easy, getting items in and out of this trailer. Over on the left-hand door, you'll notice a four-tier blanket pole and a brush tray. But on this blanket pole, this is on a gas shock, so this does pivot out as well. Over on the left-hand side, there's our second spare. So again, she wanted to carry a second spare with her. That was a great location. It's out of the way. Everything's carpeted. The doors, the entire rear tack. You'll see some hooks over there to the left. And this, as this post you see here, this is something that the customer came up with. We all got our heads together, Cimarron, the customer, myself, everybody here on the staff. We had some help on this trailer, kind of working through some of these things and coming up with ideas. But what, we, what Cimarron came up with is, is a post that has a little bit longer poles on it. And the reason why is the customer wanted to have somewhere to store her turnout blankets, stable blankets. You know, they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit bulkier. So what we did was, is we put a post. This is actually the saddle rack post that Cimarron uses. And then they drop these guys in. So these can all be adjusted up or down if we need them to. But then they swing both directions. And what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll put hooks on the wall. And then these carabiners will snap into those. But then it'll, it'll hold everything where it wants to be. And really what we're doing is, is it, it, you know, think about it, it's easy to slide those on and then get them out of the way. And then look what it did, it created more of that floor space for us. So instead of this being, you know, completely straight out to where it's fixed, and then you're having to deal with how those lay out, you know, we ended up wasting space. So this is, this is a really unique and, and creative way to create a lot more storage on the floor, but then also storage for those items as well. And the other cool thing is if I want to remove this, I can. So that post comes out just like it would as, as far as our saddle rack posts go. Again, it's the same post. More bridle hooks, carpeted. We had a set location. She wanted them off the floor. And then over here on the short side of this rear tack is a four tier. Now that is a, a recess post on the wall there, but these can all be adjusted as well. We can go up or down, space some, we can add more, we can remove them if we want. And then there's actually an LED light. It's another one of those 16 inch awning lights right above the doors here, shooting down and out. So you'll have a lot of light coverage in this rear tack as well. On top of that, we put two eight inch awning lights at the back, so again, kind of shooting down here to ground level to where the one inside the tack room is, you know, facing into the tack itself, getting light coverage there. We put another set of hooks on the right-hand door with carpet. So with that rear tack, then we're gonna get our, our rear side load, cowboy load, PC load. Everybody's kind of got some different names for it. Uh, but this has gained a, a lot of steam over the last couple of years. I mean, it's not, it's, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel. It's been there, but um, a lot of people really like that rear tack setup. So you'll see a lot more of these trailers here. Nice big wide ramp. We actually extend past the rear door. The reason why is you have to think about how horses are naturally going to come out of this trailer. You know, they're not going to come right out at a 90 and come right down this ramp. It's naturally going to take them down, so when we extend this, they're not falling off this ramp. Right above it, again, there's another one of those 16-inch awning lights. There's three more on this passenger side, but again, a lot of light coverage in this trailer. So before we jump in too far, I'm going to stop us right here. So. As you can see, we actually made this rear stall 48 inches wide, so a little bit wider. We want that added space. I mean, we're talking big hip horses. We're trying to get backed out and down this, this direction here, down that ramp. So what we did on this, on this uh, first divider here, as you can see, we've got it set how it normally would to shut. But this is a cool feature here. This breaks down. 
So it's a breakover divider. So now look at the space getting in and out of here. It's a lot more inviting uh, for horses, a lot easier for them to make this, this turn and get out of this trailer. So this is a really unique design here, padded divider here. It's a solid divider, but it does break over, making it really easy for the horses to get in and out of this trailer. On this very first divider, solid with the jail bars that are extended, and then it goes to the floor for the stud divider. But again, as if, if she's hauling two head, three head, one head, anything like that, if she wants to use this first stall for some additional storage, she can. Nothing's, you know, we don't have to worry about anything getting underneath the horses. I mean, you could stack hay really high up here, and those items, you know, potentially aren't going to fall onto the horses as, as we're in transit. Um, nice little safety feature there that they wanted. Four LED lights. So again, a lot of light in here. And then they wanted four stall fans. We can create a lot of airflow through this trailer with our big drop windows, with these big bus windows on the hip wall, these fans on top of Cimarron's standard insulated roof. So it's gonna keep that stall area about 20% cooler than an aluminum sheeted roof. It makes a massive difference in the heat. We will bring customers in here in the summertime, really hot summer days on this asphalt, about 4 or 5 p.m. We'll walk them into one trailer, a uh, horse trailer that's all sealed up with aluminum sheeted roof, and you feel the heat, and you walk them over to a Cimarron, and man, is it, you can feel the difference. And, and so that roof is, a, is, is also another advantage that she's going to have, keeping this stall area, keeping the horses nice and cool. And then, Instead of doing the rubber mats that you have to pull out, and, and this is one thing that she said. I mean, she says, I don't want to pull mats. And I don't blame her. I hate pulling those mats out too. Uh, but in particular, this trailer, and the reason why is this setup. You know, you're talking a, a side load. So, you know, you have to grab those mats. Not only do you have to pull them back, but then you got to pull them out the side. It's not a straight shot out the back on some more traditional loads. So she wanted the worm flooring, which we... <laughs> We recommended on this trailer and and she her thought process was right nobody wants to wrestle those mats so by having the worm in there she's not gonna have to worry about that she can just power wash it out um, don't have to worry about that urine getting down into the floor um, doing any type of damage to that aluminum that floor will hold up so as we work our way out one of the other things she said is she says I want more storage and I want a hay room but she didn't want just a door, she wanted a ramp going in there, which again, I don't blame her. I mean, this is, this is gonna make everything so much easier for them loading, going to shows, unloading, going home, anything like that. So with this, we put this hay room on here and then we put a ramp. So again, transition going in and out of this is gonna be so easy. And then what we did is we went up and we put a rubber mat all the way around in this hay room itself so things aren't just going to come rub up against the wall or anything like that but she'll be able to stack a large amount of hay in here if she needs to haul some shavings if she's got a muck bucket a wheelbarrow anything like that because of this ramp it'll be really easy getting in and out of this One of the last things that we did was we, we talked to her about these newer trucks being taller and taller. Um, it is something that we have seen over the last couple of years. It's not going away. I'm sure if, if, if you pay attention to trailers going down the road like I do, you'll notice some newer trucks with older trailers and they're running uphill like this. Or they're running level, but you have no bed clearance at all. So you're going to do damage to your bed of your truck. So one thing that we've done is, is on a lot of our using trailers here, um, we've actually gone in, instead of making this a 50 inch gooseneck drop that's standard, we make ours 53. And the reason why is, is like this trailer here, the only reason that she's probably gonna ever wanna make a change is if she wants to add a fifth horse, maybe she wants a living quarters, anything like that. But 
more than likely she'll probably turn the truck over a couple times in that. So maybe you don't have an issue now, but maybe down the road. And by us making this 53 inch gooseneck drop, we can make this trailer run level, making sure we have weight distribution, you know, over those two 7,000 pound axles, those, those air ride rubber torsion uh, axles on this trailer by Dexter. So we'll be able to, you know, have the weight distribution we need, have this trailer running level, and guess what? We're not gonna ding up a bed. Um, this trailer's also being 7'7 seven, seven tall. We're really not eating into that gooseneck area by doing that. But man, does it make it nice when a, a new pickup rolls underneath this trailer. If we need to adjust this at all to make that trailer run level, we're gonna have bed clearance. We're not gonna tear up a bed. We're not gonna do damage to a trailer. Uh, again, that's some, some things that we've done to our inventory for that reason. These taller trucks aren't going anywhere, so we have to adjust to them. But as you can see, this is a very unique trailer. It's it, the, the layout, we're really happy with how it turned out. She's gonna be able to take a lot of stuff with her to the shows. The horses are gonna ride so comfortable in this trailer with that air ride suspension. And some people have a misconception on these newer air ride trailers. You know, the old systems, look, if, if something happened to the compressor, something happened to an airline, a bag, you were stuck. That trailer couldn't move. But with this system that Dexter's come up with is, look, these are rubber torsion axles with a shock kit. So if something happens to our compressor, to our lines, to our bags, this trailer will sit down on those, those uh, rubber torsion axles and you can get down the road and go to where you need to and then get that addressed. But I'm telling you what, again, once you have one of these air ride trailers and you see how well the horses ride in them, how fresh they are when they step off, especially on some really long hauls, which this trailer will probably go on some, some pretty good distances uh, going to some shows you know it will make a difference for the customer and for their horses and ultimately going to compete and that, again that's what we're trying to do is give them every opportunity we can so if you have any interest i mean again this trailer is sold it is a it is a custom order but if you want something similar to it if you want us to build the exact same trailer or you got some tweaks or you want us to walk you through ordering something i'm going to give you the stock number for a reference that way we can go in and we can pull the information and send it to you, or we can start working right off of the trailer. So it's 5N201479. Again, this one we're looking at is a 2021 Cimarron North Star four horse gooseneck with air ride suspension. So if you have any questions, you wanna talk about building the trailer, you wanna talk about what we have on order, or what we have available today, give us a call. Anybody on the sales team can help you out. 303-684-3400. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.